This is where it starts to get a little bit more detailed. Up here we have notes, and along here we have the layout of the houses. So I'm on site for a five townhouse development and I've got the plans here. Perfect time to make a video all about plans. First, the different types of plans we work with. To start with, we normally look at a concept plan or a scheme plan, and that's like one or two pages of an overview, and really it's just boxes, and it's kind of like, if we put this here and here and here, what's it gonna cost, what's it gonna look like? The next phase of a concept is we'll usually develop a floor plan. The floor plan will be like, how is the building actually gonna look and feel? Then from the concept, we develop a structural drawing, and we develop a specification. Those two documents then become kind of like the framework for how is it actually gonna get built. The structural documents will then go to people like the engineer, pre-nail factory, anyone who needs to have their input on that. We can also use the structural plans for pricing and we'll develop the specification at the same time. Specification talks about all of the types of materials we're gonna use. It can include things right through to like the appliances. A couple of other things we might need. We might need a topographical survey. We'll need a scheme plan of the site. We might need a resource consent, which uses those two things. If you're doing a subdivision, you'll also need a plan for the services. Right, let's fast forward. So you're on site and you're about to put down a foundation. One of the first things you do is you get your consented plans. Really important. It's the tick of approval here from the council to say, right, these are good to go. Here we've got the scheme plan showing the five lots and in relation to the boundaries and the services. Then we will flick through to here and we will look at a site plan. This is the overall layout of the site. And then the next important thing is the foundation plan. So in here, we have a concrete slab and it also shows us how the concrete slab sits on site. We wanna find our four boundaries and we've got some measurements. The slab is 39 meters long and it's nine meters wide. So we can start to now make what's on a piece of paper a reality on site and we do that with things like profiles and string lines. First day on site you would be looking at your foundation plan, you would be setting up profiles and you would be stringing out your foundation. So I think at this stage it's relatively simple, you're just trying to create a grid system with your profiles. What I do is I pick a starting point, don't try and solve the hardest corner, solve the easiest corner. Work out what you do know. Where are the existing pegs and where's the first easy corner? Get that locked in and everything else will start to click in place. <laughs> Subscriber just drove past. If you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. So we've got our concrete foundation down. Most of our foundations are rib raft slabs and they follow the engineer's plans. Then we move into our floor plan. This is where it starts to get a little bit more detailed. Up here we have notes and along here we have the layout of the houses. This is what the final product's gonna look and feel like, and it's in 2D and it's on a small piece of paper, but essentially this here is represented along here. So what you wanna start doing is getting in your mind's eye, how is this gonna look and feel? You wanna picture yourself standing in each of these rooms, that's way easier said than done, and the first time you do that, it's gonna be hard, but the more you look at a plan, and then you look at what's on site, you look at the plan, you look at what's on site. So that would be another good tip. Go to an existing build, even your own house. Go and get the floor plan for your own house right now. Go and print it off at the council and walk around your house and get a feel for what's it on paper versus what are you seeing and touching right now in real life. The more you can create a relationship between what you see on the paper and what's happening in real life, the more that these plans will make sense to you. So if you're an apprentice or a new builder, you should be taking these plans home and you should be reading them. You should be looking at them. You should be working out the parts of it you do understand and the parts of it you don't understand. If this is a skill you want to get better at, you've then got to come to work and you've got to talk. Now obviously you don't want to do that like, oh, we're standing a frame. Hey, oh, can I just stop and talk to you about the plan? You gotta pick and choose your times. Start of the day, end of the day, smoko. Great times to like ask that qualified person on site their questions. If you can follow Lego instructions, you can follow building instructions. It's just a little bit more detailed. And so there is a section in the plans called details. 
here is a bunch of details and a lot of these are standard details. We've got an external corner here and we've got an internal corner here. And so two things, it's showing us the layer of events and each item has got an arrow. So you can see that the wall underlay is a dash and the cavity pattern looks like that. And you've got your cladding and you've got your framing. It's also got some measurements on it. And now on the external corner, it's all flipped around, but it shows you the order of event. We put our framing on, then we put our underlay, and then we put our battens, then we put our flashing. Like you look at that and you say, in what order would I put that on? Like often as an apprentice, you don't get shown the detail, you just say, right, we're gonna wrap the building, now do this. Right, we're gonna cav bat the whole thing, now do this. But you are following that detail step by step. Pause, look at the plan, have a look at like the parts that you do know and understand, and then again, relate that to what's happening on site. The more that you can build up a picture in your mind of like, this is what the detail says, and this is what the physical product on site looks like, the more you will start to understand them and the less scary they become. It can be daunting, it does look like a lot of information. It is a lot of information. It's all the things we need to build a house, but it's not as scary and as daunting as you think. Start with what you do know, find a way to relate it to the physical process that's happening on site, and it will become something that you can master.